Hey, you are now sitting, sitting with, with the Suttons. Suttons. I'm Cece, and that's I'm Tristan. <laughs> and we're really excited to be here in your home this Wednesday. We thank you for inviting us in once again. As you know, every week we have an empowering message about love, relationships, just spreading the good news about marriage. Um, the good news is, is marriage really can work. It can be fun. It can be, you know, everything that you hope for it to be, but it takes work. Work. Whole lot of work. Work, work, work. work, work, work. <laughs> a lot of real work. work. So we will not fake the funk on that. We keep it absolutely 100 on this show. And we try to get guests who come in and we'll also keep it 100. We're big on talking about topics that are not normally discussed, like the topic for tonight. Tonight's topic is delay is not denial. Mm. You know, that really resonated with me when I first saw your book and how you started talking about that. I was like, that is so real. Delay doesn't mean that this is denial, that you can't have it. But what it means is that you might have to persevere a little bit harder than what you expected to get. Sure. Yes. It's gonna take a minute. That's right. That's right. Yes. So tonight's topic is something that actually lies very near and dear to our community. Um, I'm reading that more and more African-American women are struggling with having children. Yes. And while the rate seems to be going down in other ethnic groups, it looks like perhaps we're not we're not addressing it or maybe we're kind of hiding it. We're putting it underneath well, a little bit. What do you think? There are a couple of reasons why. Okay. So we don't actually go out and seek the health care that we need. Mm -hmm. Number one, it's pretty embarrassing. Sure. So it's not a common issue amongst uh, people of color. Sure. So that's one thing. Mm -hmm. uh, as we know, it's believed to be one of the easiest things that can happen in life. Yeah. But so since we don't really go out and proactively get the help that we need, it's underreported. So even though the statistics say that it's one in eight, mm -hmm. it's actually higher than that in the African-American community. Wow. Yeah, because even after you receive a diagnosis, the other part to it is, are you able to afford treatment? Do you have support through the process? Right. It could be as simple as one year, two years, six months. In my case, it was nine years. Wow. Nine years. That's a long time. Yeah, that is a long time. Nine years. And it's not cheap. It's not cheap. We, we endured four miscarriages as well. Mm. But I'm here to tell you that I am a proud mom of beautiful, vivacious twin girls. Amen. Yes. Amen. And you stuck in there. I mean, I cannot imagine nine years. I think a lot of people would have thought that delay is denial yes. on that one for sure. Yes. So take us back to all those years in the beginning where you first found out, you know, OK, it looks like, Rhonda, you're not going to be able to have children. What was that like to you? What was it like sharing that message with your husband, your family? What was that like? Well, first of all, I've always wanted to be a mom. Yeah. So I lost my biological mom to suicide when I was four. So being mm -hmm. a mom was like a big deal to me. Yeah. Uh, so my, I was blessed that my mother's sister, biological sister, raised my brother and I. Mm -hmm. So I never actually believed that I would not have children mm -hmm. because she always spoke life into me. And plus, everybody in my family had kids. Right. I was the <laughs> only village. one without kids. So... Everybody thought that I didn't want to have kids, which was furthest from the truth, mm -hmm. right? So you've got all the pressure of being, so I want to throw this out front, that I had my children at 40, mm -hmm. and that was 10 years ago. Do That's the new 30. Y'all got to get with it. You know, <laughs> ask so Helen, serious. Come on. <laughs> so, you know, thinking about having kids at 40 is probably a little bit scary for some folks, but you have to really persevere. And so my advice to all couples is to proactively wait. That means, yes, you wait, but you need to go out and do your research. Mm. Uh, what was it like for me? Not only was it scary, not only was it hard, not only were there some nights that I couldn't sleep, not only did I learn every verse in the Bible that had to do with pregnancy and then, you know, what was really comforting to me was to find out that there were women in the Bible who had gone before me, Leah, Sarah, yeah, Hannah, Rebecca. Yeah. I was like, oh, okay, I'm amongst good couples. <laughs> I'm, I'm like, I'm going to be a twin. Yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah. this is not new information. So yeah. that kind of gave me a little hope. But as I always say, you know, quoting the scripture is great. But when you have to walk it out and live through it, that's, that's a different real. story. And so, yes, it was hard. And so taking you back like 20 years ago. There wasn't a lot of resources where there was physically somebody that I could touch right. who would actually say that. In fact, I never even used the word infertility. Mm -hmm. I was like, oh, Lord, I don't even want to use the word because it was so huge. It was the stigma behind it. Right. right? It's and then, final. Yeah. I'm like, oh, mm -hmm. my God, I don't want to use that word. So mm -hmm. I didn't even use the word infertility. It was too much. It was too heavy. 
And plus there wasn't somebody that I could talk to besides my mom, my mm. aunt. So she was my rock and a cornerstone, my prayer warrior. She was like, girl, don't worry, you're going to have kids. If anybody deserves to have kids, you do. She kept You're, speaking life. She kept continue. speaking life. Plus, I had so much experience because since I was the only one without kids in my family, everybody brought their kids to me. Of course. Oh. So look, <laughs> I had the built-in babysitter. Built-in babysitter. <laughs> drop them off on Friday, come back Sunday. And I enjoyed it. You mm. know what I mean? So I never actually thought or I didn't let it resonate in my spirit that I would never be a mom. That is so good. Couldn't, I just wouldn't accept it. If you're just joining Sitting with the Sentence tonight, we are here with Rhonda. She is talking to us about her personal journey through infertility at that time. And what she learned is delay is not denial. She persevered through nine years of not being able to have a child or being told that she could not have a child, while at the same time, her mother, her aunt spoke words of life into her. So number one that I got out of this is surround yourself with some people who can speak words of life into your situation because the doctors, they're great and all. But they practice, okay? Practice. That's the key word, the operative word. They are not all knowing, as we can see in Rhonda's situation. So here's what I want to know. Because you just mentioned that this happens so much with so many families, do you think this is something that newlyweds, or before they even come newlyweds, should sit down and talk about what happens if you yes. can't have kids? So the other piece about proactively waiting is that you really need to, and I'll say particularly in our community, we don't like to go out and get help. It's like taboo. You don't want to talk about it. But you really need to know, I think, even when you're particularly for uh, professional women and professional men as well. Sure. But, you know, you need to know if your tubes are open. This is basic stuff, mm. right? A lot of women, if even if you look good on the outside, Come you on, look 100, yeah, 130 Cute. pounds. I mean, bam, bam, bam. <laughs> no problem. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But your tubes could be blocked. Right. You would have no clue, right? Mm -hmm. Morphology, your sperm could be slow. Uh -oh. Wouldn't have wouldn't have a clue. We, we strong, <laughs> He's, she's not talking about you. No, no, no. I ain't talking, talking about, about you. I ain't talking about you. I ain't talking about you. But, you know, those are just basic kinds sure. of fertility workups, reproductive workups. And the other thing is that... You also want to know your egg reserves. So mm -hmm. even if you decide, you know what, I'm not ready to have children now, mm -hmm. you may want to go ahead and I'll just tell everybody, just bank your eggs. The technology is there. Wow. It's a lot easier. So it's like a safety deposit box. Right? Yeah, it's like insurance, brother. You can all <laughs> need it, then <laughs> rather have it and not <laughs> need it. Yes. And try to have it and you know yeah. uh, it's like no 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 don't do that yeah. go ahead because really the technology is there the support is there mm -hmm. because even if you're even if you're a single working professional mm -hmm. and you know one day you want to get married and you're 27 mm -hmm. okay? okay really in you know fertility age that's beginning to get sort of old okay. yeah because 27 27 i had my first miscarriage at uh 32 and they told me I was advanced maternal. I'm like, surely you can't be talking to a girl because I'm just like in my 30s. Right. They said, no, advanced maternal is when you, you know, they consider your eggs to be aging and old. Mm. Wow. Again, that's not something that we talk about. Right. It's not something that you would think about as a 27, 28, 30 year old. Mm. But let's just roll it back. The generational shift where people are just marrying at 27, 29, right? Right. right? You just got the wedding. You just got the right. house. You got the career. You're trying to get in and get things working. So yeah. even though you may want to have children yeah. and that's your plan, it may not be your immediate plan. Right. Bank your eggs, fertilize your eggs, go ahead and have an insurance policy, <laughs> put it in the bank. And so when you're ready, right, it's yeah. on your terms gotcha. versus having to do a hyper simulation and reproduce eggs and do all that business. I don't know about y'all out there <laughs> in Facebook land, but That's this a lot is of the first time that I've heard yeah. one of us, anyway, say, because, you know, we see the stuff in the movies. No, 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 it's stuff. real. But first, one of us to say, uh, yeah, go ahead and take them eggs and go sit them to the side. Like, yes. this, is, th this yeah, yeah. is real. Now, we're not saying, you know, because it's a lot of women that stuck on this whole biological time. No, no, in no, fact, no. it's some women who are like, I don't even, just give me the man, I'll make a baby, and you can go on about your business. No, no, no. So talk to that woman who's like, going into panic mode. So right now. really, the reality is there was a reason why our parents, your grandmother, they all had their kids. Like my mom had me, she was 23, had my brother, she was done. Mm. Well, I didn't get married until I was 27. Right. So I'm old, right? Relatively speaking to the generation before. Right. But let's think mm -hmm. about the way that we work now. Most of us are working longer hours. Some people aren't even in the same city with their mates. Some people haven't even landed a mate, right? You've got all the websites just trying to connect people together. She so there is, yeah, so that, so there's a reason to kind of even be aware and to kind of be alarmed, right? right? 
Because the other piece is, and I want to throw this out there, there are other ways to become a mom. Mm-hmm. What does that mean? So I want to address your audience particularly and say that birthing a child does not make you a mom. Mm-hmm. Why is that important? Because we have all of the adoption agencies that are available. Right. For whatever reasons, people that have children are not always there to care. Yeah. Right. So you can also choose to adopt. A lot of our um, support groups that we have, ladies that we support in Sparkles, they may, they are choosing to use an egg donor or even a sperm donor. And there are medical reasons why, right? Because maybe your eggs, your body can't produce a good quality egg. Mm-hmm. There may be some medical reasons why, okay. right? So you may choose to use an egg donor. Does that make you less than a woman? No. I like that. But there's a different way. Right. Or you may choose, you know what? I'm going to really have a more conservative route because I haven't found my soulmate or the man that I want to marry or my life partner. So maybe you choose to co-parent and help a family with children because- And so many families that need that. Yeah, well, because yeah. you can't go to the school every day. Right. And sometimes mommies and daddies need a break. Yeah. Or as we all say, I have a community. My mom was so funny. She said, why do you have all these go parents? I had like 10 go parents. <laughs> it's like, I don't ever- But what I knew and what I understood is that there are different phases and stages in their lives that they're going to need, you know, Auntie Carol Mm -hmm. and to tell them such and such, or they're going to need uncle such and such, right? Like you back in the days, 20, 30 years ago, you had the people on your block, you had your church mom, your play mom. Yes, you did. Right? You had your play and you had real community. (laughs) Yeah, but people are so busy now, right? Right. You got to plan everything. So get folks involved that can support you, that want to be with you, that have a real interest. And sometimes people only want to deal with your children maybe once a week, once a month. That's right. Or support you. But you do need, and it's called, you need a respite, right? You do. You need you the do. help and you need the care. And the kids need the voices of other uh, structured adults yes. with experience yes. and wisdom. Because right? sometimes when mama says something, you're like, whatever, she don't know what she's talking Exactly. About. <laughs> but then you bring somebody else in the picture and they say the exact same thing that mama said. Yes. And it resonates like, oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. she was right after all. <laughs> so talk to us about this. Um, what was it like? Tell us what the old Rhonda did whenever people would ask her, you know, how come you don't have any children? How come you, you know, what's taking you so long? Oh. And then tell us what you would advise women now today to say. Well, first of all, you need to practice your script. Let me That's say, let me, let me say practice that first. Your practice, practice your script. script because um, particularly as we're, we're getting into the holidays, you yes. know, a lot of folks may not be aware, but this is a very stressful time for a lot of folks, right? Yes. We know that holiday seasons are stressful for very many, for many reasons, but particularly if you are longing or hoping to have a kid. So for me, holidays were really stressful mm-hmm. uh, because I knew I was going to have the pumpkins that and all the little costumes that were for October. Then we go into Thanksgiving, you show up and people are wondering why you're not pregnant. They want to know why. And they ask you all. Then you everybody go, asks. Yeah, you're going to Christmas. It's a lot of pressure on the woman. It's I don't know what it's like pressure. for the husband, but it's a lot of pressure on the woman. Now they get it too. They, they get it too. Say, Big Tim, when are you going to have a kid? <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, A lot of people, you know, and they ugly. Oh, he must be shooting blanks, you know. Oh, oh no, they no, can no. be brutal. Oh, you're, right. Be brutal. you're right. <laughs> no, I'm telling you. And so they always ask, you know, and you get all the advice. You know, did you put your legs up? Did you take uh, Geritol? Did you put oh, Lady Pinkham? Did you have a little sip of wine? Did you have a little sip of wine? Yeah. Did you stay? Did you stay after? Did you do the? Oh, I mean, so you get all of these questions. So going into the holidays is really, really stressful. But the advice that the old Rhonda would give was really practice your script. The new Rhonda, practice your script because you need to be clear and allow people to understand your heart. Mm-hmm. Give them a little bit of information, but also respect your privacy. Absolutely. And so I would say things like, you know what? I'm practicing every chance I get. <laughs> and when something changes, you'll be the first to know. <laughs> I like how you shut that down. So it's like, you'll look, be the first. don't ask me any more questions because every time I see you <laughs> does not mean that you need a report That's on good. where I am in my journey. That is so good. Because it's painful, right? It and so what I remember from the old rounds, there were so many times because I didn't want to hurt people's feelings. Mm-hmm. I smiled when really on the inside I was crying wow. and I was in pain. But the new round would be like, okay, I can't say that, but mind, <laughs> so, <laughs> mind your business. So, so just, 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 stop asking folks over and over again when they're going to have kids because you never know what's going on. You never know. Kids. And yeah. I'm going to tell you something. A few of y'all drilled me and Mr. Sutton here for a while on where y'all babies at? What's going on? I think probably around about a year 
five-ish, seven-ish, it started to dwindle down because, yeah. you know, it just is what it is. Everybody's not either A, ready to have children at that time. Everybody B, has not even decided if they want to have children. Some people are perfectly okay, like the Suttons, are perfectly okay with it. But whatever it is, you have to respect people's space and be very careful not to call someone selfish because they may not have children at that time. You never know if it's because they can't. You just never know. So we have to be a lot more sensitive about this subject now, especially since it's occurring a lot more than what it used to. And if you're that concerned, I want to see your, your fund for the diapers, the daycare, what? the college fund. That Come you're going through. To put towards them kids that you keep asking about you ain't going to keep. And I'm putting <laughs> you on auto dial for the babysitter nights. That's right. No, you, yeah. need that. you need the support. You need yeah. the support. You too. But it really can be painful, though. And I think that the other piece is that Sometimes people don't really mean to be insensitive. That's the other part of it, but they don't really know how to ask. Sure. Right. So they don't know how. There's not a book, except, you know, we have the Sparkles book and the Sparkles support, and we're talking about it in this platform. But some people really don't know how to ask that question, right. or they don't know how to tactfully be concerned yeah. and maybe give you a little brush. Yeah. But some of the smallest conversations can actually spark you to really be proactive. And to really reach out and go and get the help that you need. Yeah. It may be something as simple as losing weight. It may be a different way of eating. There may be exercise. There may be an extra vitamin. It may be learning something by maybe a simple medical procedure. But the other piece is that we don't get medical intervention when, because again, it's like, oh my God, should I, should I do that? Yeah. But yeah, you probably need to. It may be covered under your insurance right. and it may not be, but it's at least worth the challenge to yourself. Absolutely. To go ahead and get that taken care of. Absolutely. I read a statistic that was talking about some of it is our health challenges. Some of it is too much stress on the job. There's so many different factors that are out there for you to just kind of throw yourself to the side and be like, oh, well, you never know. Some of these things are probably curable with just a quick fix. But whatever it is, keep persevering. As Rhonda just said, what was the turning point for you? Like, how did it just finally happen? Just the Lord dropped it in and that was it? No, let me be clear with you. This is crystal clear. I I realized that I was, um, you know, pressed and I was not going to give up. But my best friend, that's kind of when I knew I was in trouble because, you know, I'm like tough. And I've, I've already at this point going through a couple of miscarriages and wasn't really openly sharing. But my best friend said, hey. I will carry your babies for you because I was always talking about twins. Twins reign in my family. My girls are the uh, fourth, fifth set of twins in my family, but the only girl, girl, they're cutest. <laughs> but uh, when my best friend said, you know, I'll carry your babies for you. Wow. And I was like, wow. okay, maybe I don't see what I'm saying or I don't hear yeah. what I'm saying, but this my girl. Mm -hmm. So I must be in trouble if she's willing to go to the end. Again, for somebody to be that um, moved and that concerned about me yeah. and what was apparently coming out of my mouth, yeah. that that was like the turning point for me to say, okay, I must be really, that was a red alert for me. Wow. I was like, okay, I must really be in trouble because I was always, I always thought I was tough or thought I was, you know, and you carry it around, right? Yes. Smile when you don't want to. And, Your badge. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm like, hey, I'm tough, you know. But yeah, when she said that, that was really the turning point for me. And I said, you know what? Let me at least check it out. Mm -hmm. And so in my case, I had overactive natural killer cells. What does that mean? Okay. <laughs> so, you know, um, autoimmune issues. You hear a lot of women of color that have problems with lupus and yes. some of the other kinds of yes. things. And so I was, I could tease and I even tell my girls, as I said, I knew I was a fighter. I knew I was tough. I just didn't know my blood was tough. <laughs> so basically my body would reject the pregnancy. So I would get pregnant doing great. And literally at any point, it was always during the first trimester. Thank God for that. And I know that's a crazy thing to say, but when you get over 20 weeks, yeah. you actually have to have a funeral. Mm. So I never had to have a funeral. Oh, yeah. It was always before, which I'm like, I did Lord, not know that. yes, wow. you have to actually do a burial. And I was like, oh, I'm like, Jesus, thank you. Yeah. Okay. So I got babies in heaven, but wow. I did not have to bury one per se. Yeah. But um, anyway, I would get pregnant and, you know, doing well, you know, hair growing, giving a little pooch. And I would just swell up big real quick. <laughs> Couldn't wait to get in those pregnancy clothes, girl. I'm telling you, go shopping, <laughs> pee in the car. Just <laughs> happy. Yeah, girl, just happy. Yeah. Lay down and wake up, and the story is completely different. Wow. 
unexpected, nothing, nothing. So unfortunately, the way that it works is you have to have at least three miscarriages in order to be considered uh, infertile in, in some of the diagnosis. Okay. But in Europe, it's a little different. But I think that once you're over 35, mm -hmm. you're considered high risk. Mm -hmm. So there are some other precautions or they accelerate your treatment. So lots of information. So don't get scared, ladies. Yeah, there's hope. Scared. Yeah, there's hope. And there's hope for good friends. Shout out to your friend who most people want to let you borrow $20. <laughs> let you pay, let, let you borrow their body. Baby. What? Yeah. Call, That's real. House. Yeah, yeah. She yeah. was willing to care. I was like, okay, so my friend, my besties. Y'all may see, I always tag Ooh. her name is Evangeline Cole. Oh, Ruzon now, but Cole yeah, Ruzon. yeah, yeah. That yeah. is a real friend. I need me a friend. I maybe have one somewhere she down like, there. Child, I care the baby for you. I was like, what? I was like, okay, so oh, let me check that. Yeah, yeah two babies. Because I was trying to get it over with. I'm like, okay. I, I, and I told the Lord, I said, now I lost two. Yeah. You got to give me two because you know I'm your girl, right? Okay. And then guess he what? No, he was like, you got to have. You gotta go through some more. You're not there yet. Oh. So I lost two more. Oh. Yeah, girl, don't be sad. I'm because just... the other piece that we have to also that I have to wrap my mind around is you have a plan, but he has a bigger plan. Amen. Right. So what is always amazing to me is if I had a got stuck even at the first or the second miscarriage and I didn't press a veer or I felt delayed or denied and I didn't move forward. Yeah. I was like, oh my God, once I got pregnant and got my babies, they were little the babies, child. <laughs> once I had them, I was like, what if I had to stop? What mm -hmm. if I had to stop had to do, which is why I founded the organization. It's like, what if I would have gotten stuck and I didn't keep going? Then you wouldn't have been able to birth this purpose and help other yeah. women yeah. birth what they're going through. Oh, that's a whole nother, that's that's a whole nother that's realm. A whole nother. Yeah, you so, yeah, birth, birth a blessing yeah. to be a blessing. Yeah. Wow. And had you not, you probably just would have, you know, you would have been okay with God's plan, whatever that was. Yes, but it wouldn't but, have been fulfilled and it wouldn't have been his will. Right. Right. So we've been able to just encourage so many women and so many dads. And yeah. probably the thing that I'm probably most surprised about is how many people that really have a desire. But they don't, they're not able to verbalize it, right? Because mm -hmm. you're not walking around telling people, oh, well, you know, baby. one day I want to blah, 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 blah. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, but if you have just even an inkling of a desire, the biggest thing I'll tell you. So, one of the questions you asked me earlier, I'll go back to mm -hmm. what would the Rhonda now mm -hmm. tell, you know, the old Rhonda, yeah. what advice would I give? Is don't give up. Mm -hmm. But you have to also be willing to explore how far do you want to go to reach your goal, right? Yeah. Because in my case, I actually did uh, IVF treatment. It took me a long time to say that in public. So, really? so break that down for people who don't know what that is. Okay, so it, uh, IVF treatment. All right, so there are tons of ways to get pregnant, and one of them is the easy, natural way, right? So as you heard me say earlier that I have overactive natural killer cells. So when I got uh, support from my doctor, he kind of laughed and he's like, oh, you don't have a problem. You can get pregnant. We just got to keep you pregnant. Right. So he said, well, what we have to do is we got to suppress this immune system that you got. Mm -hmm. And we got to make sure that the pregnancy sort of sticks and stays inside. Mm -hmm. Right. So they were these eggs that I was telling you about. Mm -hmm. Right. So I created these wonderful eggs naturally um, with a little chemical help. Got the eggs. They pulled them out. Ooh, painful. painful. Was like I thought that was going to be painful. Yes, that was pain. That's like the most painful part of my journey for whatever reason. Wow. Pull the eggs More out. painful than having the babies? Yeah, girl, I had a C-section. I was okay, like, yeah. Well, good on that. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> like, take them out. But uh, so they pull the eggs out, right? Mm -hmm. And then they fertilize them. And this is all done outside of the body mm -hmm. in a nice little dish that you probably have heard all about. <laughs> and so they watch them and the ones that are most active and healthiest and give you the best result. And you've got to wait a few days to make sure they live and they're viable. Right. And then they reinsert and put them back in. Right. And even that still doesn't guarantee you pregnancy. Right? But it increases the but chances. But it increases the chances, more. yeah. Wow. And so, and that just goes to show you how critical and how... Uh, delicate life is, right? Mm -hmm. Because there are folks who, and I was like, now come on now, we got people everywhere, a little bit of, a little bit of cheering. They just out there just and have, getting yeah, pregnant, yeah, just talking yeah, about. Yeah, I was like, they passed the baby Moses law, 
while I was going through this. And I, it's baby Moses law, right? So if you don't want a child or you feel like you can't be, you can drop them at an emergency um what? either fire, facility. yeah, mm -hmm. the fire department mm -hmm. or a police station, and you won't get penalized. Right. Right. But if you leave your baby in the ants, yes, you're gonna get some problem, you're going to jail. Yeah. But I'm so glad they came up with that law because there are a lot of women who just opt not to. Yeah, or or for whatever reason, right? Because it can be very overwhelming. Yeah. Some women have postpartum. I mean, they're depressed and yeah. you know, you got hormonal things that happen as well, or they may not have the resources. And in some cases, you have some women and some young folks. Who don't even know that they're pregnant, right? They don't have any signs, and all of a sudden it's like, okay, you uh -huh. got a baby. So that's real. That's, that's real. Happens. Wasn't my case, boo? Because I mean, I was like, whoa, I was <laughs> laid, laid up. up. I was <laughs> laid up. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes. I was like, laid up. Well, you know, and when I see people, I see a lot of women now. They climbing on top of stairs with high heels and all that. <laughs> Girl, I didn't get back into heels until my children were like five or six years old. <laughs> that took a toll, but you had twins. You had I had twins. twins. I was like, I got to be able to rip and run with these little people. <laughs> <laughs> so Sparkles of Life, tell us how long it's been around and who do they cater to? Okay, good. Good question. So Sparkles has actually been around since actually the, since before I had my children, because I was actually kind of doing this kind of support work. I believe in sowing seeds. So because I always wanted children, anybody that I saw or knew wanted children, I would buy this book and I would, you know, be a support. So I was sort of supporting women prior to that. But actually, when I uh, got into my own challenge and my own struggle and wasn't able to find a resource that I could literally put my hands mm -hmm. on, I knew then that I needed to create something. And so I wrote the vision. I wrote it out. I said, I want to be able to help and encourage and give other women hope. That is so, beautiful. so Sparkles, my, my kids are born, were born in um, 2007. And uh, so I started kind of doing some of that work, sort of formally during that time and created the organization. One of the main thrusts of what we do, not only do we pray, but we give support, but we also raise funds. Uh, so I'm hoping that if you have any of your listeners out there, any of your audience that, because again, it's very expensive treatment, mm. but um, not only that, we also want to be able to expand our um, strategies to help families who want to adopt. Mm. And not only that, I mean, there's so many parts that we'd like to be able to do that we need funds to do. So we wow. support, um, we raise funds, and most importantly, we give hope. And so this platform that we have is just to let you know that you're not alone. You're not the only one. And not only are you not the only one, you're not alone. We have so many women who have touched our organization. God has given me a great hand to pray. Mm -hmm. And so there are people that, you know, I had one that you may have seen on my Facebook page like a month or so ago, that somebody I prayed for in uh, May uh, at Lakewood Church. Mm -hmm. And uh, she, she said, oh, because I was praying for a speedy, pregnancy for her and I always tell people don't ask me to pray for you unless you want to get some babies Come on. <laughs> I'm just saying she got that he hears me she yeah yeah yeah, yeah so don't ask <laughs> unless you're ready and so we're gonna we line up with this plans but anyway so but yeah she got pregnant right away and there are many wow. many testimonies so go to the website wow. plenty on the book but the other piece is that I want folks to know that it doesn't have to be this sad long hard journey like it was for me besides wow. my mom helping me because you're not the only one. You're not the only one. You're not, You're the not only the, one. talk to the talk to the couple right now that is just almost at each other's throats. Um, I believe that you said, you know, when you were going through it, you almost kind of felt like less of a woman. And I'm sure there's so many women out there who are feeling like that right now. Talk to that couple that is struggling with this right now. Well, let me just tell you, not only is infertility one of the most hardest things that you'll go through. It causes you to look at who you are as a woman and as a husband and where you stand in your family, where you stand in your profession at a granular level. Mm -hmm. It causes you to really look at your relationship with God because you're like, no, wait a minute now. I'm a tither. Mm -hmm. I've been faithful. Mm -hmm. I ain't cheating. I ain't running around. You told I me to be fruitful. Wait, wait a minute. I ain't yeah, yeah, that's, that's, wait, that's the first scripture. You're like, wait a minute. But then you, you tell, tell me. me. You say, yeah, we, yeah. Mr. Jesus. <laughs> Come on, now. And I'm like, no, wait a minute. Yes. And so you don't yes. fully expect to go through that level yeah. of duress, right? Because mm -hmm. again, it's supposed to be easy. Yeah. But the other piece is hang in because not only are you not the only one, you got to understand that. And this is how I had to really kind of look at it. 
is that your life is really more like a film film strip, right? Mm -hmm. So uh, the vision that I got is that this is where I am now. Mm -hmm. This is not where I'm going to be five years from now. That's right. And so unfortunately, sometimes couples, we get at each other's throat. Mm -hmm. We get blocked into what people are speaking into our lives. Mm -hmm. And you just you're just right here. Now, mind you, you've got the pressure of not only your body, your aging, you've got the finances, you've got the doctor's reports, you've got, you know, work that may not be uh, uh, um, supportive or right. maybe your career may it's not. Right. Yeah. So you don't have a conducive environment in a lot of areas. Right. So you got all these competing factors and you're like, is this going to really happen? Absolutely. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Oh. It will. And so you have to make up in your mind. What levels am I going to go through? Am I going to believe the doctor's report? Because sometimes the doctors will tell you, you know what? Your chances of having a baby without having any reproductive help or support or medical intervention may be 15%. Wow. And you may decide, I'm going to take my chances with 15% and go home and do what I do. Right. <laughs> and maybe I will and maybe, maybe I, I won't. won't. Right. Or you may decide after you've done your fertility workup and they've told you, you know what? Your tubes are blocked. You may need to have a procedure. Let's open them up and let's take a look. You may have to do some exploratory stuff. Mm -hmm. Or you may decide, you know what? This really is not for me. Mm -hmm. I'm going to choose to either support another family or just live happily ever after vacation mm -hmm. and support Sparkles. And you, may choose, sparkles. you may choose to do that. <laughs> so there are many different ways. But I'll say as a couple that's out there, you have to really choose what works for you mm -hmm. and be okay with it and understand that it can move because the doctors may tell you, well, you can do this procedure and it may cost you $25,000. Mm -hmm. Maybe you have to do that it's more real. than once, it's but real. it's real because most folks don't have $50,000 sitting around to hope to have a child. Right. I thought it was like to hope. It's not even getting, no, 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 sir. No, sir. Yeah. It is a very, very <laughs> expensive procedure, but you know, what is it? What are the odds of if you do these reproductive and, you know, what are the odds that you will have children? Well, it depends. Okay. Right. And so that's probably the hardest part about infertility, because it varies based on who you are as a person, sure. and how you show up. Sure. Right. Mm -hmm. Because you may have scar tissue, your uterus may you may have an incompetent uterus or, you know, hate to, you know, not to throw anything on the guys. But mm -hmm. a lot of times, you know, folks think that it's just a female problem, mm -hmm. but it's actually 50 50. Wow. Right. So. What advice would I give to a couple or to a family that's starting out or somebody that's planning a wedding? Go and just do the work, mm -hmm. right? Go and get your reproductive health checked out so you at least understand. Because could you imagine, and this happens quite a bit, happening every day, you're planning this huge wedding. You just went to the bridal extravaganza. You just bought the ring. You just went to Jared's. You, you know, you just got the house, right? You got past Hurricane Harvey. You got all your stuff lined out. Amen. Got the career, got the car, got the great job. You're traveling and yeah. you decide for whatever reason after this Christmas, you've seen all the little booties and you know what? Hey, it fell in your spirit. Ooh, I'm ready. I'm ready. <laughs> and you're going to decide that I'm about to get started. Right. I see you throw away the pills. You're not doing any of that. No, you know, no, no, no. <laughs> yeah, so you know, you're going to just do it, right? And so as far as you know, you look like a healthy, yeah. right? You work out. Taking care of myself. You cl eat clean, Pitch right? Popping. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're doing all of that. You know what I'm saying? Beautiful hair, <laughs> lashes, nice teeth, all that. So you've done all the work, right? right? Yeah. And you haven't had any kids out with it. Just whatever. You, you're doing good. Or maybe you have a blended family mm -hmm. and you're choosing on the second go around that maybe you want to start a new family. Right. So you've done all of that. Right. And all of a sudden it does not happen like you think. Mm -hmm. Then what? What do you do? Then what? Do you talk to somebody? Do you tell somebody? Do you go out on Google? Do you get into a, a group? Do you get into a forum? My suggestion would be go to a urologist for the guys, mm -hmm. go to a fertility specialist, just let them do your work. So you want to start with your OB, mm -hmm. GYN, mm -hmm. uh, let them check you out. You know, there's some simple things that they can do. Okay. Do that piece first. That's not as expensive. That's not as expensive. Okay. So do that because it may be something very simple. Maybe it may be just, again, changing your diet, maybe a little bit more vitamin. You never know. Things are very sure. simple now. But sometimes it may be just a little tweaking, okay. right? One of the things is drinking water. And go on the bed or well, how about that? 
If that's all we got to do, a lot of us don't even have <laughs> a lot of we don't even do that. Right there. <laughs> there you go. But you know what? There's some other things like um, using acupuncture. You know, mm. that's really a, a really good method out there as well. So there are a lot of simple things that you can do. Again, changing your diet. I bet that plays a big part. I'm telling you, I I didn't drink coffee for a long, for like years. Mm. I was drinking green tea every day. I even went uh, on a two year stench like every other year without eating meat. Oh. Yeah, I was like, okay. You were serious. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. I gave up somebody. meat, sister. I gave yeah, up was, meat. I was like, <laughs> you was for real. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm trying to get the little children here. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Try to get them here. <laughs> so tell us about your book here and where our uh, wonderful listeners can find you. Okay, so you can go to sparklesoflife.org. I'd love for you because I have the good, bad, the ugly, all the dirt. But more importantly, it's a group study and a study guide. So I'm telling you everything that you need to do, things that I've done. I have scripture references in here. And these are just great discussion points, right? For you to discuss with friends and family. I'm available for, um, you know, for chat and discussion, uh, book clubs or, you know, any forum that we can actually get the message out. But it is available on Amazon. Um, go out and get, get a copy, you know. And it's actually a really good uh, seed to sow for Christmas, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. So, or for uh, a woman that you know that is, you know, or family, husband and wife, that yeah. is being challenged in this area. You know, that would be a nice, would that be a nice gift? To I think it's a nice gift. That? But the other piece is sometimes it's just a hard thing to talk about. Sure. So what you could very easily say is, girl, I heard of a okay. brother right, right, right. or a sister. Right, right. Hey, I heard about this on Facebook. This yeah. may not apply to you, but. That's good. Because you got to really take them out of it. Right. right? Because nobody wants to admit no, yeah, that they have enough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I know you know how to do it. You gotta ease it in. That's why you got my last name. That's you, Wanda. Right, come on. Well, you know, this may not apply to you, but I heard about, I heard this right. lady talk about blah, blah, blah. And so you can share some of those points because, again, it's a very private thing, right? Mm-hmm. It's not something that you just want to throw out there. And and the other thing is you want to give them sort of examples, some success stories. Yes. There's a lot of information out there. What I'm really excited about now is that there are so many platforms to share the share the share the information now. Mm-hmm. You've got storylines in movies. You've got superstars that are coming out finally yeah, telling, yeah. okay, yes, I had a lot of miscarriages, or yes, yeah. I've had some challenges in that area. And so you've got sort of ordinary people that are standing up. And probably one of the bigger things that I always, my kids tell my age all the time, and I got my one daughter that keeps telling people I'm 32. Come so on, I say, 32. girl, I am not 32. <laughs> Where'd she get 32 from? She said, Mama, you look 32. I well, said, no, I'm not 32. You said you spoke me in existence. I'm going to speak that. <laughs> well, I tell you what. I, I said, girl, I am not 32. Too. Said, Mommy, I, I tell her I'm a freak girl. Are you ashamed? She said, No, mommy, but you you, you look 32. 32. I'm like, girl, I'm not 32. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what's really important is that you and so one part of my um hope for women is to know that even if you have your children, you know, beyond 32 or beyond 35, <laughs> and you have them at 40, and as we know, you know, women are having children later. They are. So I always tell my kids, hey, I have 40 years of experience. There's nothing that you can come up with, nothing that you can think about that I haven't already done, experienced, read, or heard about. I can research. So don't even try it. Don't Uh, think about it. Don't try it. Yes, 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 yes. So, you know, it's a good thing. Well, I think you are the biggest success story that I've ever heard. Anybody who has persevered that long, had that many unfortunate miscarriages, but still is able to sit on the top and say, you know what? It's possible. You got to hang in there. If, if that were my space, I'd be trying to latch on to you. I will tell you, if you're going through, if you're experiencing this right now, latch on to someone who can speak words of life into your situation. A lot of it is going to play a big part on that. You do not want to keep surrounding yourself around the nagging girlfriends and family who, you know, pressuring you about it. That's yeah. not what you need. That's not what you need. And same thing for men. Yeah. You want to be around people who can speak words of life into you. And you need joy, child. Get ready for the holidays. Get ready for the holidays. Yes. Because people make practice your script. Yes. Practice your script. Your I'm elevator telling, pitch. Get it together. Practice your script and be ready because what happens is, you know, you don't really understand the full impact right. of what it feels like to be in the room and see, you know, people with their children seeing the stroller. I'm telling you for years, it's like if I see another stroller, Oh. If I see another stroller, <laughs> if one more person asks me, I'm like, you know, see, they they pushing me. Yeah. I'm like, see, you know, y'all trying to really make it personal. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, you have to ask me the same 
question. Yeah. So finally, it took a lot of courage for me to kind of defend myself and say, you know what? Not only is this you, 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 you're, you're touching me as a woman in some spaces that you don't have permission to, mm. right? This is private. This is between us. It's not you that's involved. You don't have the extra money. I don't have the extra time. But the emotional fortitude that it takes to get up and still have hope. Yes. Because unfortunately, with infertility, as women, we're reminded every 30 days. Oh, yeah. Wow. Yeah. Wow. yeah. That's serious business, girl. That's enough yeah. to make you lose a little mind now. A little bit. You're kind of like, okay, so I had hope. And you go through your medications and you do whatever and, and you exercise and you stop eating meat and stop drinking, you know, coffee and all that. But still. Girl, I'm telling you, this is the truth. Okay, now I'm telling y'all a little secret. Girl. Yeah. I'm going to be a little transparent. Girl, I used to carry pregnancy tests around. I was like, because just in case. Just, just in case. Look, girl, my stomach got about a half because I had a little fat stomach. <laughs> if I got bloated or just like, yeah. I, was like ooh, I was like, ooh. That's it. That's it. <laughs> Could it be it? That's it. Just, oh. I, <coughs> is it it? Oh. Girl, I was ready. I was so ready. In fact, I still have the um, positive pregnancy test. Oh, that you have for the girl. Yeah. Oh, that's like, real. girl, I had a little, a little faint of pink. I was like, ooh. <laughs> Is that? Could it I can't. Be? I said, could that be? Could it be? Hey, I got it. I got it. But even after that, right, I had it happen four times. So I was like, mm. so you're cautiously happy. Right. All the way until the very end. Yeah. Rhonda, there are so many people who have shared some love tonight. We want to share some love back at them here real quickly. Um, what did Marcus just yes. say here? So shout out to Marcus Holm. He said, uh, my wife and I did everything short of having a surrogate. Wow. So she had a friend that was willing. So, I mean. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what? There are a lot of services. So I'm glad you mentioned that because uh, there are there's a whole new movement for surrogacy. Uh, that's the other choice, right? Mm -hmm. And there's a whole lot of ways to do that as well. But probably one of the better ways is to to get a friend if you can. It's, it's a lot of cheaper. Borrow friend. If you, you, friend, if you can find somebody. Own a friend. Own a friend. But there are some agencies that that handle that as well. Excellent. We got Miss Shanika Griffin. Um, I can relate, but I'm single. I'm tired of being asked when I'm going to conceive. Girl, didn't I tell you to work your script? <laughs> work your script. Work your script. You got, your script. Now you got to start with first of all. <laughs> yeah, get them the hands. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, the clapping hands. But I will, I will, so I'll encourage you, go and do your research, right? Find out what your fertility workup is and understand what your options are. And you may choose to, and we have a lot of women that have been in our uh, circle who have chosen to use an egg donor and they have mm. happy moms, you know? Yeah. So that's also an option. Absolutely. Don Paul says, talk to people about being sensitive. Why is it their business if you don't have kids? None of them. None yet. <laughs> None your business. And we have to be okay with you shutting them down. You gotta be okay. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. I'm telling y'all, practice your script. <laughs> now you want to have a script that you can break out anytime that you want to, you know, if you're in a professional setting, right, gently. you want to gently <laughs> be able to do it. And then if you're at church, you want to have another script. Oh, you got to have a few scripts? And then wait, when you get it, when you get at the Christmas dinner, and they keep asking you the same thing that they asked you at Thanksgiving. That's another script, but you may have to do the eye, neck, and all that. But yeah, but, but I also think that you have to also really be prepared to know what you're going to say, how you're going to say it, how you're going to deliver it. Because yeah. the piece that, that is uncertain yeah. is how do you act when the emotional floodgates open for you? Wow. And sometimes it does it unexpected. And, and you don't know. I mean, there was some times that child, I cried. I'm like, Lord, you know, and you may, you may end up an emotional wreck. This is true. So Brandy Jefferson, shout out to Brandy and Jetty. Um, how much surrogates make asking for a friend? <laughs> Y'all better keep it real. See, no. Jetty and Brandy having a good time over there, so they See, might be let willing me, to. Let, let me just tell you that there are agencies, and so what they do is that, and so I can give you that information as well, but there are agencies, they look at your, you know, your health. It's, the other thing I want to point out, too, is that there are not enough surrogates uh, for people of color, mm. right? So we need more folks with, and there's a whole big screening. And just like you go for a job application for the surrogates, not only is it a match, yeah. but the potential parents, yeah. they look through and they screen, right? You want a surrogate that's probably similar background. Sure. Some of them look for intellect. They look for obviously health. They look for a ton of uh, 
screening options. Right. So they can make a lot of money. I mean, some they're going to be feeding your babies as they're your eating. Baby. And, yeah. Oh God, yeah. But yeah. don't, don't that movie that was out, that was a crazy series. Crazy movie. But, but it's, a, it's a lot of truth to it too. Okay. Right. Okay. <laughs> Ms. Shanika Griffin, uh, what if you have a condition PCOS, PCOS and your family and friends just don't get it and keep pressuring her hard? So, so let me be clear with you. Uh -oh. You need to get Surround yourself around people that can and get them a little pamphlet. There's mm -hmm. an organization which you already know, P PCOS. Yeah. They have a very strong organization and support group. Mm -hmm. And so that's probably the piece that folks are insensitive because there are conditions now yeah. that were not diagnosed 20 or 30 years ago or even 40 years ago, right? Because mm -hmm. people at church used to say, oh, you him, so she can't have kids. Right. Well, they don't know why. Right? right. And maybe people didn't talk about it wasn't as open. Right. And so you may have a condition. And this is also an opportunity for you to educate them. That's all right. Know your script. Right. So maybe you don't want to go into all the level details, but maybe you will tell them, hey, have you ever heard of PCOS? I've got that diagnosis and this is what the symptoms are. Right. Hey, but this is how you can help me. Right. And then you tell them how they can help you. And one of the thing is, you know what? And, you, and I always like to give a hand, mm -hmm. like the little touch hand. Just, just touch it. Just touch it. Just put that energy out there. Yeah, just put it. See, you don't touch it. Because that's why they tell you to do that church. Don't touch somebody and agree. Right. But, you know, you just may want to tell them, you know what? I know that you're asking because you care. Mm -hmm. But this is really hard for me. Yeah. And let me tell you why. Right. And so you're not only asking for their support, but, you but you're also shutting them down, but you're also educating them. That's right? good. And so that's why knowing your own reproductive health, knowing what, you know, some of the challenges are, right. you can tell them. Because when I told my mom that I had overactive metric, because she said, over who, what? We don't get that. And she said, girl, <laughs> what kind of, <laughs> well, she said some other stuff. She's like, now what kind of body you have? I kept, you got a body? Well, because everybody kept telling me, you work too much. You're mm -hmm. so busy. You're always doing something. And so mm -hmm. I've had a lot of people, probably one of the things that hurt my feelings the most is they said that, well, you work too much. You're too busy and mm -hmm. you don't want kids and blah, blah, blah. But I have like kind of not nervous energy, but I like to always be doing something. Mm -hmm. And I did that. Of course, my poor children are like, child, we just want to stay home. Mom, we're tired. <laughs> 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 but, you know, you really have to make sure that you understand not only your own health conditions, but what works for you. Right. What works for your family. Right. Try and tell them because most people don't understand the delicate nature that it takes now to have children mm -hmm. and the resources. Right. So if you tell somebody, you know what, the doctors told me that, you know, we're only going to be able to start our family if we do X, Y, Z. Mm -hmm. You got 10,000 mm -hmm. on this bill. And there it is. Because even when you do the procedure, you may have to have a medication and the medication can run $5,000 a month or $10,000 a month. Or it could be simple as an acupuncture shop. So probably one of the most difficult things is you can't just look at somebody. So there's also secondary infertility, right? What does that mean, yeah. right? Because that means that you could have a child now and be perfectly fine. And maybe five years from now or two years from now, you try again and you have difficulties. Oh. Or if you're having a blended family, maybe you had another partner wow. and maybe you had children mm -hmm. again 10 mm -hmm. years ago. But the dynamics have changed in the relationship. Mm. You have another partner. Mm. And so maybe there are some conditions because the other piece that is always very difficult is you can't just look at somebody and tell Right. If they're healthy, we got that dating. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'm just telling you because yes. you don't swipe, you swipe and left. You're like, you may need uh -oh. to swipe down. Uh -oh. <laughs> Come on, Tinder. Oh, yeah, I'm like, Tinder, don't put that on there. I know that. But that is real. No, it's real. Mm. And so that's such a letdown. But mm. I also think that we need to have those intelligent conversations, yes. right? Because most of us are thinking, okay, well, I want to get married. And we want to do this and you want to have your career and all that kind of stuff. But we, because years ago, you would have family planning discussions, right? Mm -hmm. And so when you look at the demographics and sort of the, the, the races and the, the cultures that are moving forward and those that are having more children, mm -hmm. people of color are having less children mm -hmm. because we have fewer options, right? So the, there's a generational shift where people are marrying later. Yeah. Or they're having blended families or second partners or second marriages, or, you know, they haven't even found someone yet. Yeah. Right. So it's things, a lot more dynamic. Yeah. It's like, it's, it's all about being cute, but beyond the cute, boo, you want to have some cheer? 
<laughs> like start looking at some other things, yeah. some other options, some other. Well, you do, you do, but beyond credit score, but credit score is good right. too. You want to look at that? Point. <laughs> that's a starting point because you're gonna need. That's not even a thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yes, credit score. <laughs> Any more great comments? Y'all have been so awesome out there. We thank you so much for listening in tonight. This is Rhonda. You have truly educated <laughs> us. I mean, I think people came on and got a whole lot more than what they bargained for. But we thank you for your transparency. Yes. We thank you for this beautiful organization, Sparkles of Life. Please again on Facebook they can find you at Sparkles of Life dot org dot org on the website and yep. on the website as well and please go out check out her book she is very transparent and that's what I like about you you know Girl, you I give it very it straight really. and that's what that, we don't even realize the power that we have to set other people free from the situations that they're going yes. through by being transparent so I encourage you if you're going through something today you ain't got to tell all of Facebook but yeah. someone needs to hear your message. Someone needs to hear your message. I do want to say this as well, because this is a very sensitive subject. I get more people that inbox me than they do mm. that like my page. I'm like, wait a minute. And I put all this miracle. I put all <laughs> of the blah, 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 we're doing this. Yeah. And so a lot of times people don't want to like the page because they don't want to be associated with infertility or having a problem mm. or letting somebody know that they have a problem. Right. It might show up for somebody's time. Yeah. 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 So feel yeah. free to inbox That's me good. if you have any questions as well, really because we point. also respect the privacy. And so we expect to be able to come on more often and Absolutely. have some additional chit chat. And Absolutely. so we appreciate the platform platform um, that you've given us uh, sparkles of life and given me today. And hopefully uh, I've, you know, shared some information that'll get you all geared up and ready for the holidays and um, set your family straight, set your friends That's right. straight. And set it's going to be a different kind of Christmas. Yeah, set yourself free. Set yourself free. <laughs> so with the domino and spade table and Thanksgiving and Christmas, stop asking folks when they're going to have kids. Yes. Stop asking them in too. You'll never know what they shoot blanks. That's what she said. That's what she said. <laughs> Amen. And if you're going to keep asking, you should put $10,000 on. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> or say a prayer, a word of encouragement, yes. or just don't say anything at all. Go do your homework, do the research, because if you see a couple and they don't have kids, again, it's none of your business why they don't have them, mm -hmm. right? Just don't ask. Don't ask. You ask. know, don't like ask. That. That's the best way to end this show. Just don't ask. Don't ask. <laughs> Pray, you know, we got to tell them to pray, pray though, right? Pray, pray. and don't ask. Pray. <laughs> and don't ask. We thank you so much for joining us once again with Sitting with the Suttons again. I'm Cece, and that is... Tristan Sutton. Uh, yes. <laughs> and we thank you for inviting us into your home. Every week we are here Wednesdays at 7 p.m. at Tristan and Cece. And as you know, we never like to end the show without speaking words of life into our situations, into our marriages. So at this time, if you will please raise your right hand, mm. and you'll repeat after us, Rhonda. Okay. Today, I will commit to being a better person than I was yesterday. Today, I will commit to being a better person than I was yesterday. Today, I will open. I will be open and honest with myself. Today, I will, I will be, be open and honest, honest with myself. myself. <laughs> we all say it together. Today, Today I, will be I will be a better communicator. Today, I will be a better communicator. Today, I will rid myself of negative views of dating and marriage. Today, I will rid myself of negative views of dating and marriage. And today, I will do my part in making, making marriage great again. again. <laughs> we thank you so much. You don't have to memorize this. Yeah. We barely got it yeah. memorized yeah. ourselves. <laughs> but thank you for joining us tonight, Rhonda. Thank you so much again. Be blessed. Oh, be and we hope that you have a blessed week. Go Strohs. Don't, yes. We're about to go check yes. that out right now. History, we hope they're winning. <laughs> Please tell us good news. But have a great night. Take care of yourselves. Good night. God bless.